So welcome to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the AQA GCSE Maths paper of November 2022 Foundation Paper 1 which is a non-calculated paper. Now as always I'll include a question breakdown in the description below and I'll also include the individual grade boundaries for this particular paper which can all be found in the description. Now before we get started working through this November 2022 Foundation Paper 1 non-calculated paper. A little reminder though, if you're wanting a question breakdown to see which question refers to which topic, all you need to do is just check out the description and they will tell you clearly. So let's get started on question 1. So question 1 says circle the length of time between 4pm and 5.05pm. So for this we just need to work with minutes. So as you can see from this particular time difference that we're working with 1 hour and 5 minutes. Is the difference between these two times. So now as you can see all the times are converted into minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes and 60 plus 5 is 65 so the correct answer is the second option. For question 2 it says a circle has a diameter of 10 centimeters. Circle the radius. Well the diameter is equal to the radius times 2 so therefore that the radius is going to be the diameter divided by 2. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, so it's our first answer. For question 3, it says circle the percentage that is between a half and th 3 quarters. So for this, we know there's a couple of ways in which we can do this. Well, we know that this half is 50%, and we know that 3 quarters is 75%. So what we're looking for is the middle number between these two. Now, obviously, just as a uh, sort of can, by cancelling the wrong answer what we know is definitely going to be wrong well it's definitely not going to be 40 because that's less than 50 it's definitely not going to be 80 and 90 because again they're outside of or higher than 75 so the correct answer can only be 60 percent moving on to question four it says circle the value of three squared plus four squared so for this what we need to do is convert the numbers so three squared is three times three which is 9 and 4 times 4 which is 16 so what we're looking for is 9 plus 16 which gives us an answer of 25 then for question 5 it says simplify fully so here we're collecting like terms so if I circle everything with an a including the symbol on the left so I've got 8a plus 6a which is 14a and then if I go back and just edit the things that I've rolled over so I've got 5b and if I just rub that out and just put a circle back, we get minus 2b. So it's going to be 5b minus 2b, which is 3b. So the answer then is 14a plus 3b. Moving on to question 6, it says 200 students were asked about the monthly cost of their phone contract. Here are the results. And question 6a asked us how many more school students than college students were asked. So if this what we need to do is work out the total of each of the rows. So here we've got 40 plus 90, which is 130. And we've got 32 plus 38, which is 70. So all we need to do is then work out the difference between 130 and 70 which gives us an answer of 60. Moving on to 6b says what percentage of the 200 students had a monthly cost less than 25? So less than 25 here is going to be adding up the less than 25 column. Well that's going to be 40 plus 32 which is 72 and it's out of 200 so it's going to be 72 out of 200. Now when working with percentages and fractions we want the denominator to be 200 so if I divide both these numbers by 2 so I get 100 half of 72 is 36 and 36 over 100 is 36 percent moving on to question 7 it says the only animals on a farm are 30 cows and 80 sheep one fifth of the cow of the 30 cows are sold and five eighths of the 80 sheep are sold work out the total number of animals that were sold so for this what we need to do is work out what one fifth of 30 is going to be now when working with the word of that basically means times so then i'm going to do one fifth times 30 and if i convert the 30 as a fraction i've then got 30 times 1 which is 30 5 times 1 which is 5, 30 divided by 5 is 6. 
So that's to do with the cows. Then if I then work out the sheep and do the same, so I'm going to do 5 eighths of 80. Now again, another way you can do this is divide by the denominator, multiply by the numerator. So this is going to be 80 divided by 8, which is 10, and then 10 times 5, which is 50. So all that's left for me to do is then simply add these two numbers together, giving me a total answer of 56. Moving on to question eight, it says some gamers were asked which type of video game they preferred. 65% said action, 90% said role play, and the rest said sports. What percentage said sports? So for this, all we need to do is just take away the two, these two numbers from 100. So we've got to do 100, take away 65, take away 19. Or alternately, what you could do is add 65. Let me do this in a different color. So if we do 65 plus 19 which is going to give me an answer of, let's just quickly work that out, so make sure we get it correct. So we've got 14 and 84, so that becomes 84%. Then if I then do 100, take away 84, leaves me with 16, so the answer then is 16. And I would have got the exact same answer had I done this as well. Moving on to question nine, it says that a diagonal of a rectangle is drawn on a centimeter grid. The sides of the rectangle are on the grid lines. Work out the area of the rectangle. So what we need to do is basically to convert this into a rectangle. So if the line drawn is the diagonal, then these two, I just need to add these two lines here to make a rectangle. Don't know why I'm doing it in different color. But obviously, whenever drawing, you need to make sure that you're always using a ruler and your lines are always straight. So here we just need to work out the area of this rectangle. So it's 3 times 4, which is 12. It then says one side of the... Oh, let's move down. So this it says one side of the parallelogram is drawn on a centimetre grid. The parallelogram does not have any right angles. Complete the parallelogram so that it has an area of 24. Now, when working with the area of a parallelogram, you need to make sure that you recognize that it's the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. So we know that the area is equal to base times the height. So we know that the base of this is going to be 6 and we know that the area is 24. We want to work out what the height of that is going to be. So here if I then do 24 divided by 6 that's going to tell me what h is and I work out that the h is going to be 4 squares. So my line needs to be somewhere along this line here. So it needs to be, I'm just going to use a different color, so it needs to be somewhere on this. Now I can't use this point here and I can't use this point here because it says that the, there are no right angles in the parallelogram. Also it makes it look like a rectangle so we don't want to go for that. So what I then need to do is draw a line of six squares along that dotted line anywhere as long as it's not on either end of those x's it can cross obviously so i'm going to go for this point here and this point here and you can see that's going to be six so one two three four five six and again let me just go back because i want to show that we're doing good practice so let's draw that straight and what i then want to do is join those points. Now remember that this line could be anywhere on the dotted line but it needs to be six across and then all that's left for me to then do is draw the other sides. And let's do that in a different color and oh, that's okay let's do it in blue. And like so but the height of that definitely needs to be four and the, the other base needs to be six and you want to try and be as accurate as possible but there are loads of different variations but it does definitely does need to be on that dotted red line like so and there we go perfect moving on to 9c it says two sides of a rhombus are drawn complete the rhombus so again we've got two squares in so we need to go two squares out and then all that's left for me to then do is connect the ends together now there isn't any other variations of this so it needs to be exactly where I'm doing it on the screen and again make sure that you are using a ruler. Examiners now are penalising a lack of neatness and accuracy 
So always make sure that you are using your equipment correctly and not being lazy. Even in exam conditions where you feel that you want to get questions done as quickly as possible, don't substitute quantity for quality. And there we go. Moving on to question 10, it says here is a calculation. Use the calculation to help the following question. So here it says write down the answer. And then so here we can see that all that's happened is we've got an inverse calculation. So 428 times 30 is 12,840. So 12,840 divided by this number is going to equal 30. It then says circle the answer to 214 times 30. Well, basically all that's changed is 428 times 30 is 12840. So if I divide this number by 2, I get 214. And if I divide this number by 2, well, from this, then that means that's going to give me, actually not 30 by 2, but if I then divide, so if I'm divided 428 by 2 to get 214, then that means I then need to divide the answer by 2. And half of 12,840, well, if I do a bus stop to divide those, in which I've got 0, 6, 4, 2, 0, I get an answer of 6,420, which is our third option. Moving on to question 11, it says that a shop sells notebooks and pencils. Notebooks sell in packs of eight for £12 and pencils are either sold 56 pence each or packs of six for £2.70. It says Marek buys some packs of notebooks. It costs £60 in total. How many notebooks did he buy? So what we need to do here is we need to divide, see how many packs of eight we can buy for £60. If I then do 60 divided by 12, which gives me five. So it's going to be five packs. But the question is asking for how many notebooks, not how many packs of notebooks we're going to have. So we then need to multiply that number by 8, and 5 times 8 is 40. Moving on to B, it says work out the cheapest cost for 10 pencils. So if I just write down the two options, we've got 56 pence each, or 6 for £2.70. So what we can then do is buy two packs. So two packs is going to be two times £2.70, which is going to give me an answer of £5.40. And that's for 12 pencils. So there we're going a little bit more. Again, I'm still going to end up with 10 pencils. Alternately, I could buy 10 pencils. So that's going to be 10 times 0 0.56 which is £5.60. Alternatively, what I could do is buy one pack plus four pencils separately. So one pack is going to cost £2.70 and four times 56 pence. Well, if I do 56 times four, I get 24 and 22. So it's £2.24. And then add these two amounts together in which I get £4.94. So the cheapest the work is the cheapest cost for 10 the 10 pencils is going to be £4.94. So then moving on to question 11 C, it says the shop also sells folders for £3.20 each. The shop has an offer of buy three folders and get another one for half price. Work out the cost of four folders using the, the offer. So for this, we need to work out the price of one folder, which is full price, another one, which is full price, the third one, which is full price, and then the, sec the fourth one is going to be half price, which is going to be priced at £1.60. So working in pounds, what we then need to do is just add these four numbers up. So I've got 0, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 12, and then carry the 1, and that gives us an answer of £11.20. Then... For question 12, it says A, B and C are connected by paths. The lengths of each path is shown. Nathan and Sue each walk from A to B. 
Nathan walks along the path of A to B and Sue walks along the path of A to C and then C to B. How much further does Sue walk than Nathan? Give your answer in kilometres. Now, because the question is asking us for our answer in kilometres, it makes sense for us to convert all the lengths into kilometres. So thankfully, the only one that's left for me to change is 800 metres and that in kilometres is 0 0.8 kilometres because there's a thousand metres in a kilometre. So if I just divide 800 by a thousand, I get 0 0.8. So then looking at Nathan, well, Nathan is just going from A to C, oh, no, sorry, A to B. So that is just going to be going along this path here, which is a total of 2.1 kilometres. So Nathan is 2.1 kilometres. Then to work out Sue, well, she's going to go from A to C. So that's going to be going along from here, which is 1.9 kilometres. And then she's going to go from C to B, which is 0 0.8 kilometres. So if I add those two numbers up, I get an answer of 2.7 kilometres. So the question is asking me, what is the difference? So I just need to do 2.7 minus 2.1 which gives me an answer of 0.6 kilometres. Now moving on to 12b, it says that the straight path between D and E passes through P. D to E is 200 metres and P is 60 metres closer to E than it is to D. Work out the ratio of DP to PE. Give your answer in its simplest form. Now this question is only worth three marks and it's question 12 out of around about 27. But again, I would say this one can be done in several ways. Now, as long as you're getting the correct answer and you're showing some working out, you should be fine to get the full marks because you can't make this question up in terms of its answer. So there must be some ma method behind your working. So let's have a look at a, a, one of the ways in which you can do this. Now, the first one I'm going to say is probably using algebra. Now, we know that D to E is 200 meters. So this whole distance is 200 and we know that P is 60 metres closer to E than it is to D. So if we call this length here X, then this length here is going to be 60 metres more. So that's going to be X plus 60. Now using equations, we know that X plus 60 plus X is going to give me 2X plus 60. And that is equal to 200. Now as you can see, what we've got is a linear equation so all I now need to do is work out what x is going to be so here if I take away the 60 that's going to give me 2x and 140 and we work out that x is going to be 70 so what I can then do is replace this with 70 and this with 70 plus 60 which is 130 so that means that d to p is 130 and p to e is 70 so then if I write that as a ratio that's going to be 130 to 70, which is 13 to 7 when simplified. Moving on to question 13, it says Emma tries to simplify CD times 2. Here is her method, and then here her method is shown. It says, what is wrong with her method? Now again, for one mark, it's all about how you represent the answer. But basically, how I would represent this is CD times 2 is C times D times 2, which is 2 CD not for CD. Now again, you could think of a number of ways you can write it in words, you can write it in sense, explaining why Emma is wrong. And as long as it's valid, you will get the single mark for it. Moving on to question 14, it says work out 0 0.37 times 0 0.26. It says give your answer as a decimal and it is worth four marks. So there's going to be a fair amount of working out you're going to show. But with multiplying with decimals, there are loads of different ways in which you can work this question out. So as long as you're getting the right answer and you're showing correct working out, you will get the four marks. So you don't need to worry if your method is different to mine. Now, how I usually do this is basically with decimal numbers, I make a note of converting each of these numbers into whole numbers. And what I do is I make a note of how many decimal places I've moved each uh, number or the decimal point in each number to then correct it when I get my final answer. So to convert 0 0.37 into 37, I've moved it a total of two decimal places in the right direction. Then with 0 0.26, I'm going to change that to 26, in which I've moved the decimal point two decimal places to the right to make it 26. And in total, 
I've moved it four decimal places to the right. So when I work out the answer to 37 times 26, and again, you can use different ways in which you can do that. When you get your final answer, you need to move the decimal point four places to the left to get the correct answer. So if I then do 37 times 26, and again, you could use this, or you could use the grid method, and it's entirely up to you which one you do. Um, so here, I do the grid method, I've got six, got two zeros, so that's 600. Four times two is 14, with one zero. Three times six is 18, with one zero. And six times seven is 42. So if I then do 600, 180, 140 and 42. Add those numbers up. So I've got 2, 12, 16. And 1, 6 is 7, 8, 9. So I've got 9, 6, 2. And then what I need, then need to do is move the decimal point four places to the left. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Decimal point is there. Put zeros in the empty gaps. So my final answer is 0 0.0962. Moving on to question 15a, so here we're looking at a double-sided equation. So we've got 11x take away 3 equals 6x plus 1. So for this, what we need to do is take away the smallest x from both sides, which is 6x. So if I take away 6x from both sides, I'm going to end up with 5x minus 3 equals 1. Then I add 3 to get rid of the plus 3, which leaves me with 5x equals 4. And then divide by 5 because I want to get x by itself which leaves me with x equals 4 over 5. Now, again, 4 over 5 is 0 0.8, but you can leave it as 4 over 5 or write it as 0.8. Now, if you're not great with your fraction conversions to decimals, then just leave it as a fraction. When it comes to algebra, you will get the same amount of marks if you leave it as a fraction, whether it be simplified or not simplified, preferably simplified. But if you can correctly convert it into a decimal, then that's fine. But just be mindful that if you have got a nasty decimal number, just leave it as a fraction. Moving on to question 15b, it says 2x over 5 equals 14. So again, our objective when solving equations is to get x by itself. And how you get rid of things is by doing the opposite of what it's doing to x. So here we want to get rid of the 5 and the 5 is dividing. So we multiply by 5. So 2x is going to equal 5 times 14, which gives me 70 and then divide by 2, so x equals 35. Moving on to question 16, it says bag A and bag B each contain only red discs and green discs. Bag A contains 28 red discs and there are twice as many red discs as green discs. Bag B contains 20 green discs and there are three red discs to every five discs, uh, of every five green discs rather. And the question is asking us to work out the total number of discs. So let's have a look at this. So here for bag A, let's just write bag A. We've got 28 red discs and there are twice as many red discs as there are green discs. So that means that if there are 28 red discs, then if there's twice as many red discs, so then the green discs can be half of that number, which is going to be 14 green discs. So in total, what we've got is 28 plus 14, which gives me an answer of 42 discs. Then moving on to bag B. It says we've got 20 green discs and for every five green discs, there are three red discs. So here, how many fives of 20 do we, or how many fives go into 20? Well, that's going to be four. So then the green discs are 20 and the red discs is going to be 20 divided by 5 which is 4 times 3 which is 12 so that gives us a total of 32 discs so then the grand total is going to be 32 plus 42 which gives us an answer of 74 now with the green discs let's just put that in perspective in case you're not sure how I've done that so we've got 20 green discs. If I just write, draw them in rows of five. And for every row of five, I'm going to have three red discs. So one, two, three, one, two, three, 
one, two, three, one, two, three. And then all I then need to do is just add them up. So here I've got eight in this one, eight in that one, eight in that one, eight in that one. Eight times four is 32. So that's where I've got 32 from. Moving on to question 16b, it says a different bag C is empty. 28 red discs from bag A are put into C and 20 green discs from bag B are also put into C. One disc is picked at random from each bag. Complete the statement. So let's have a look at what we've then got. So here we've got 28 red discs from bag A. So we're looking at all of them. So if I just write A, and I've got B and I've got C. And let's just put this here. And originally what we've got, if we go back to the top, in bag A we've got 28 red. And we've got 14 green. And bag B we've got... 20 at uh, 12 red and 20 green so let's have a look at what we've got so it then says 28 red discs from bag a point to c so that means we're then going to have no red discs in bag a because they're now all going into c and it says the 20 green discs from bag b are going into c so that means we're going to have no green discs in bag b and we're going to have 20 in bag C. So these are the contents of each of those bags. So in bag A, we've only got 14 green. Bag B, we've only got 12 red. And in C, we've got a mixture of red and green of 20, uh, 28 and 20, respectively. So it then says that uh, one disc is picked, uh, is one disc is now picked at random from each bag. Complete the statement. So the probability of selecting a red from A is going to be zero because there are no longer any red discs in there. The probability of selecting a red disc from B is going to be 12 out of 12, which is one. And the probability of selecting a red one from C, well, there are 28 out of a total of 48, in which I can simplify that as 14 over 24, which can simplify further as seven over 12. So any of those fractions will be fine for the last one. Moving on to question 17, it says, what is one over 20 as a decimal? Circle your answer. So one over 20, and again, the number of ways in which you can do this, you can write this as two times, well, no, it's gonna be half of, it's gonna be a half times one tenth. And one tenth, so that's going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.1, which is 0 0.05. Another way you can do this is basically divide 20 by 1. And so 20 doesn't go into 1, so we add a 0, carry the 1. 20 doesn't go into 10, so carry the 0. And we carry the 10 over to the next 0. So then how many 20s go into 100? That's going to be 5. So then our correct answer is 0 0.05. For question 18, it says divide 62 in the ratio of 3 to 7. So again, the three steps of sharing a ratio is we add the numbers in the ratio, which is 10. We then divide the amount by the number we've got, which is 6.2. And then for 3, we multiply the answer by the numbers in the ratio. So I've got 3 to 7. So I want to multiply 3 by 6.2 and I want to multiply 7 by 6.2 and again multiplying so we've got 3 times 6.2 which is going to be and uh, let's just work that out that's going to give me an answer of 18.6 and again any which way you do your multiplying with decimals should give you the correct answer and 7 times 6.2 which gives me an answer of 43.4 so it's going to be 18.6 and 43.4. And you need to make sure that those numbers are in the correct order because the smaller number needs to go first. Moving on to question 19, it says n is an odd number. Why is n multiplied by n plus 1 always an even number? 
Well, here what we've got is we've got well, n and then the bracket basically means n times n plus 1. Now, if this is an odd, and we're going to multiply it by an odd number plus 1. Now, an odd number plus 1 is basically going to give us an even number. And any, so any odd number multiplied by an even number will always be even. And again, you could give an example by swapping n for an odd number and showing it. But if you are going to do that, make sure you do show more than one example of an odd number. Because what you don't want it to be just pure coincidence that the number you've picked works or doesn't work. Now, moving on to question 20, it says, here is some information about the time spent on social media by 40 women and 40 men. And the question is asking us to tick one box for each statement. So for the first one, it says three of the women spent more than 11 hours on social media. So if you look at more than 11 of the women, and more than 11 is in this box here and this box here. So if we see that we've got two that were in the second to last option and one in the last option, so that there is definitely true. Then says the range of men is 15 hours. Well, typically you think that the range is the smallest number, take away the biggest number. Now for the men, the smallest possible number is two and the largest possible number is gonna be 14. Now, although the inequality says it's gotta be greater than two, if you think it, it could be like 2.0000001. So generally speaking, we can relate that as being two. Now here we've got 14 take away two which is not 15, so therefore that cannot be true. It then says for the third option that the, the for the women, it has a higher median than the men. Now, if there's 40 and 40 in each, then the median person for each of the genders is going to be 20. So what we need to do is find out which group or which time interval is the 20th person going to be. Now, for the women, it's going to be in this region here. For the men, it's also going to be in this region here. So it's in the same region, but for the median for both those numbers, it's either going to be somewhere between five and eight. So this one might be true, but it's definitely can't be, it definitely, it's definitely not false, and it's definitely not true. Moving on to question 21, it says that diagram shows the vectors A and B. As a column vector, A is 3, 2. What is the column vector for B? Well, remember that we always go as a horizontal movement as the first number and then the vertical movement for the bottom digit. So here we're starting at this point here because the arrow is going down. So here we can see we're going to the right four, so that's going to be positive four, and we're going down one, so that's going to be four minus one. For question 21, it says work out the column vector for 4a. So if, if a is 3, 2, so if a equals 3, 2, then four lots of three, two. Basically, what we need to do is just multiply each of those numbers by four. So four times three is 12, and four times two is eight. So the answer for B is going to be 12, eight. Question 21, so it says work out C as a column vector. So it says A plus C equals three, zero. So if A is three, two, and we've got C, and we know that the answer is three, zero. So what plus 3 gives us 3? Well, that's going to be 0. And what plus 2 gives us 0? Well, that's going to be minus 2. So we're just looking for 0 minus 2, which is our fourth option. Moving on to question 22, it says work out, and then we've got some fractional calculations to work this one out. So for this, what we need to do first is work with the bracket first. So we've got 7 over 10 minus 4 over 15. So again here, what we want to do is get a common denominator. So from this, our common denominator is going to be 30. So to get 30, we multiply the first fraction by 3. So 7 times 3 is 21. And then to get the second fraction with a denominator of 30, we multiply it by 2. So that's going to be 8. So 21 take away 8 is going to give me 13. So it's 13 over 30. So this bracket is basically 13 over 30 divided by 2 over 3. Now when dividing with fractions we flip the second fraction so that becomes 3 and a 2 and we change the division symbol for a multiply. So here we've got 13 times 3 which is 39 
and 30 times 2, which is 60. And then I can simplify that fraction by dividing both numbers by 3, in which I get 13 over 20. So my final answer is 30 over 20. Moving on to question 23, it says work out all the integers values of x for which 12 is less or equal to 4x and 4x is greater than 25. Now with these types of questions what you want to do is get x by itself and as you can see we've got 4x so what we need to do to get rid to get x by itself and get rid of the 4 we need to divide everything by 4. So we divide 12 by 4 which gives me 3 and 4x divided by 4 which leaves me with x and 25 divided by 4 divided by 4 that's going to give me 4 into 2 goes none and that gives me 6 remainder 1 which gives me 4 remainder 2 and 5 so then that gives me oh that should be a 2 not a 4 what am I doing there we go so it's 6.25 and what we then need to do is write the integers that are 3 uh, bigger than 3 and equal to 3 and less than 6 so it's going to be 3 4 5 and 6. Alternately what you could have done rather than doing division is converted 25 over 4 as a mixed number so that's going to be 6 and 1 quarter and then we get 6.25. A much easier way of doing it but if you want to do, long division, uh, do the bus stop method of division then that's absolutely fine. Moving on to question 24 it says here is some information about 120 people who visit a shop. Three quarters of people buy neither a coat or a dress 19 people buy a coat and 14 people buy a dress and it says complete the Venn diagram to represent the information so let's have a look at this so let me just zoom out so we can see the whole Venn diagram in there so the first thing I'm going to work with is the first bit of information it says that three quarters are outside of the Venn or outside the two regions of the Venn diagram so working out what three quarters of 120 are going to be so I'm going to do 120 and again divided by the denominator multiplies which is 30 and then we multiply by the numerator which gives us 90 so the outside number is going to be 90. Now from the other bit of information I know that in terms of the coat all of this is 19 and from the D section all of this is going to be 14. Now all of those two sections combined together is going to be 120 minus 90 which is 30 so the whole Venn diagram the numbers inside the Venn diagram need to add up to 30. So from this what we can then do is work out the additional difference if we add 19 plus 14 we get 33 and as you can see we've got an overlap of 3 so that means that 3 must be in the middle now if that sort of clarent color adds up to 19 then if we take away 3 from 19 we get 16 so this number here must be 16 and if we do 3 take away 14 or from 14 we get an answer of 11. So our completed Venn diagram should be this. And as it's worth three marks, we're generally speaking going to get a mark for every single one that we do. Um, or, well, although we've writ written four numbers, but we'll probably lose a mark if there is one that's wrong. Moving on to question 25, it says write down and we've got indices in the form of this. So the first thing we need to do is simplify both the left hand side and the right hand side. Now when multiplying, what do we do to the powers? Well, we add them. So this is going to be 6 plus 5, which is 11. And then we've got 3 to 7. Now what we then need to do is we want to make this second number equal to 1. Now how do we do that? Well, we divide both numbers by 3 to the power of 7. So when we're dividing what do we do to the powers well we take away so 11 take away 7 is 4 so it's going to be 3 to the power of 4 to 1. Now the next thing we then need to do is work out what 3 to the power of 4 is actually going to be which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9 so 9 times 9 is 
81. Now moving on to question 26, it says A is 10% more than B and it says circle the ratio of A to B. Now this one can be a little bit confusing so let me just put you to a couple of different ways in which you could answer this question. Now we know that A is going to be more than B so therefore the first number needs to be bigger than the second one. Now using that knowledge that means that it definitely can't be the first option and it definitely can't be the last one. The next thing to then look at is basically if you know it's going to be 10% more well 10% of 1 is 0 0.1, not 10. So it's definitely not going to be this, whereas 10% of 10 is 1, and 10 plus 1 is 11, so the correct answer must be 11 to 10. Another way of looking at it is if A is 100, then, sorry, if B is 100, then A is going to be 10% more, well, 10% of 100 is 10 and so if we add 10 to 100 we get 110 so then the ratio is going to be 110 to 100 and if we simplify that ratio we get 11 to 10 so it's like another way of explaining how we get the same answer then moving on to our last question it says that use trigonometry to work out the value of x now with trigonometry you might instantly be thinking how is this on a non-calculated paper now you do need to remember that there are certain trig ratios that you need to know the exact values of now for this the first thing we need to know is which trig ratio are we going to be using so if we start by labeling the triangle so this is our theta or our well, I'm not going to use x because we've already got an x so I'm just going to call it theta and this side here is going to be the adjacent so I'm looking for which trig ratio uses a and h well that's going to be cos so if I start by writing the cos ratio down, which is A over H, and then all I then need to do is then substitute the numbers in. So I've got cos 60 equals X over 8. Now cos 60 is a half. And again, if you're not familiar with the exact values of trig, you just need to learn them like you would with a spelling test. Now, again, if you're not sure about what the trig ratios are, then a little reminder. So if I just write sine, cos, and tan, and if I write down the ratios of 30, 45, and 60, sine 30 is a half, sine 45 is 1 over root 2, sine 60 is root 3 over 2, cos uh, 30 is root 3 over 2 cos 45 is 1 over root 2 and cos 60 which is used in this question is a half and then moving on to tan we get not 0 we get uh, 1 over root 3 we've got 1 and we've got root 3 so cos 60 is a half so then substituting this in so if I just move this over here I get half equals x over 8. If I take the 8 over and multiply by 8, so I get 8 over 2 equals x. So x equals 4. So there is my final answer. And that is the last question on this paper.